What's up, guys? I finally bought a boat. It's been a uh, it's been a long time. I miss my old boat. I've been looking for a uh, an aluminum boat with a just small little kicker, galvanized trailer, and I finally pieced one together. I didn't. Sorry, there's cars going by. I've been looking online. I've been looking around trying to find something that's like exactly what I want. But it was always like the trailer was bad, but the boat and the motor were good, or the boat and the trailer are good, but the motor is shit and stuff like that. So I finally uh, found a boat and the trailer that were look good. Um, it's a welded boat. I'm going to go through this here in a second, but, um, and then I found a motor and, uh, now we have a, now we have a working boat. Get out of here, B. Anyways, I'm going to walk you guys through this. We're at Panther Lake today. This is going to be the, not the maiden voyage. I took it out. Yeah. Two days ago. Um, took it out two days ago when I brought it home and, uh, I didn't film it. Uh, I just want to make sure everything kind of worked, um, how it handled and everything made some adjustments. Um, I haven't really done a whole lot. I think I'm going to do a, a video series of me creating the layout of the boat a little bit different than what it is right now. I'm going to add like platforms and stuff like that. But anyways, we're going to do a little quick walk through and, uh, show you guys what I've got. Okay. Starting here at the back. This is the power horse. We got a Johnson 15 horse long shaft. It's actually a, um, they added, it was a short shaft and they added the spacer. So I can actually change that to a short shaft, but I do like the long shaft. I am going to put a little, um, hydrofoil on it so we can get a little bit more power, um, especially out on the sound, but she's a strong runner pulls or turns over on the second or third pole. Nothing crazy. B, get the heck out of here. Anyways, got a little three gallon, um, gas tank. Nothing crazy. I'm going to buy or upgrade that to a six gallon just because I want the little bit more of a range. Um, the boat, it's actually falling off, but it's a Studebaker. It's a 14 foot Studebaker. I believe it's a model 22 on the title. It says it's not a Studebaker. It says it's a Lone Star, which is false. I don't know why it says it's that way, but it is, it's a Studebaker. Um, I believe it's a 1963. The motor is a 1983. Um, so I bought the motor, 500 bucks, running with the gas tank in the line. Everything's good. He just put a new impeller last year. But yeah, so I, I, he put a new impeller last year, brand new prop on it just a couple of weeks ago. Um, new spark plugs, everything, it, it runs really, it runs really well. Um, so the boat, I bought it from a guy he wanted 850 for it and the trailer. So I uh, took a look at it and I offered him 800 bucks. There was a couple things. The transom's kind of cracked actually. It's, it's a welded aluminum boat, but the transom has a little crack in it. But luckily I know how to weld aluminum. Um, and I don't think it's actually that serious to where I need to weld it immediately. But pretty much have very open layout. Very, very simple layout. And then for the main course here, we've got my old bow mounted trolling motor that was on my old fiberglass boat. Um, it's a uh, Minn Kota power drive. I believe it's a 55, that's a 50 foot pound thrust on this guy. I've got it bow mounted. I've got the pedal here. I can move the pedal wherever I've got like 20 feet of it. Anyways, yeah, very simple. I just went and bought a new battery, deep cycle marine battery. Um, on my last boat, I did not have a deep cycle, so I'm excited to have something that's going to last a lot longer. We'll be able to go out all day without having the battery die like we used to. But anyways, we're going to launch the boat. Um, <clears throat> the one thing that this thing does have an issue with is this, the, the plug that it came with is a little, I don't know if you guys can see that, it's a little rotted, so... When, uh, when I first launch it, I've got to make sure that that thing is fully in there, tightened down. Because um, the other day, I uh, wasn't paying attention. I was, it was like getting my feet wet because it was spraying water in. So, Anyways, so we're going to uh, unhook everything, launch it, and uh, we're going to get some fishing. I haven't fished here for a while. The last time you guys saw me fishing here was um, a couple videos ago. So, again, we're at Panther Lake in the Kitsap County. I believe it might even be Mason County. I'm not sure. But we're going to get at it, and uh, hopefully you guys enjoy. Hopefully we catch some bass today. If we don't, I'm just stoked to be out on the lake with my new boat. And hopefully the rain stops, because 
It looked like it was going to rain pretty badly when I was coming in, but we shall see. So many bluegill, holy smokes. Let's see if we can get this thing started real quick. Wow. Just like that. Alrighty. Well, we're gonna power on over this way to that little island area, and then uh, we'll get to fishing. Alright. Oh, God, this is still an issue, apparently. Damn, this thing moves! Alright. So I just realized it's like very shallow. Oh shit, I just got a bite right off the bat. Uh, wow, okay. Uh, this is very shallow here. It's like 10 feet deep, maybe. Literally just had a bite and didn't even realize. Just throwing a spinner bait. Oh my gosh, this thing is the most annoying thing. I need to figure out how to fix that. Great pitch. Oh, yep, yeah. there we go. Little guy, little, little guy. <laughs> well, come on, stop. Stop, you're gonna get me, and I'm gonna get you. Yep, there we go. Mm-hmm, you got me. Ah, he got me again. He just pooped on me. First fish. Second fish of the boat. And he pooed all over me. Alright, we're gonna go get a screwdriver so I can fix this stupid trolling motor. That's super annoying and frustrating. Got it. Alright. There's the issue right there, or the, the problem. This guy should be attached over here. This little knob, I don't know if you guys can see that, should be over here. Should be a quick little fix. That should be how it works. Money. Back in business. You know what we're gonna do? We're just gonna go from here around. There we go. I thought so. Not a bad little guy. Right in the top of the mouth, right where you want it. Oh, geez, almost let him go. Not bad, a little pounder. Ooh, got me wet. There we go. No clue on the size. Drag bass. Like a pound. As soon as I threw it, and as soon as it touched the water, he had it and he was barely hooked. But yeah, another pound on this little uh, jig here with a little craw. Not bad. Third fish of the day. I just threw it out here. I wasn't filming because I didn't want to waste any battery, but just threw it right out here in the open and came and smacked it. So yeah, that was caught on like a peanut butter and jelly. Oh, peanut butter and jelly jig. A little bit of chartreuse in there, and then a uh, kind of a matching craw. I think it's actually just a water er, watermelon red craw. Nothing fancy. Gets the job done. I haven't ever really fished this side. So far, we've caught that one way back over there, and then this guy that was came out of about right here. Everything pretty much on different techniques. I got you know that little little tiny guy on the senko. 
that one over there on the dock on a Senko and this guy on the jig. So they're definitely here. Just have to kind of figure out what exactly, you know, try and find the pattern. It's always the fun part, trying to figure them out, what they want. Definitely something moving, I'm thinking, because they've been chasing in the uh, spinnerbait that I they had on this rod. But I took it off just because that spinnerbait is kind of a big, it was like a three-quarter ounce spinnerbait. And so it's kind of a, kind of a lot. So tied on this little three-eighths ounce pumpkin head jig and boom. Let's see what else we can get. There we go. Not bad. Smacked it. Not bad. Not bad at all. Oh, don't you do that while I'm trying to help you. Oops, sorry, buddy. Not bad. Biggest one of the day, number four. Let him go. Nice. Con the uh, XD3, the 3DX, or XD, 3D, 3XD. Gosh, I can't talk. There we go. Let's get back out there. Well, apparently I wasn't filming that entire thing, so I decided I'm gonna try. I've never, I've never, uh, tried to fish for bluegill before and I bought these little I mean I see so many oh there's a little bass but I see so many of these little bluegill nearby I'm just gonna try with this little tiny jig oh, there's a bass I'm trying to oh that was a little bluegill first cast already There we go, got one. <laughs> it's not a bad one. Multi-species, look at how pretty this guy is, stop. Look at his, he's pissing on me. There's Beth, look at that guy. One back. I just saw a decent sized bass. Here's some more. Oh, ooh, that is a large, very, very large bass. Um, okay. He is just chilling. Here comes the rain. Yep, we're going to. Oh, Jesus, we're getting wet. We're gonna go over here. Well, we are underneath these trees here, and I am not getting wet at all. This is nice. Oh, there's finally one dude out on the lake. Well, <laughs> it's, a, it's a little rainy. Um, it's turned off quite a bit. It's like, uh, it's four o'clock. Um, been out here for about three hours. Um, I'm gonna hang out here for about another five minutes, and if it if it doesn't really slow down, it looks like it's going to. Um, but if it doesn't, I think we might call it a day. You know what? Matter of fact, we're gonna call it a day. I'm getting hungry. Anyways, we're going to zip on over through this nonsense, load up the uh, the boat on the trailer, and uh, take off, and we'll close it out in the car. Well, that was a, a very wet last part of the day. Um, I'm gonna get this thing strapped up. Um, today was fun. Honestly, caught four bass, I think. I wanted to catch one last one for you guys. I saw like three or four really big guys, like four plus pounders. Um, they're just, I think they're still fry guarding, which is, you can catch them that way, but it's just difficult. You have to throw, you know, like 
swim baits and stuff like that, which is fun, which, but I just, I'm not super experienced in that. And to me, it's kind of boring because it's just, you're trying to stay in the same spot, but usually they're out in the middle where it's a little windier and yada, yada, yada. So, but anyways, we are going to get this thing all strapped in. Um, and we are going to do some videos coming up soon on what I'm going to do with it. I'm thinking I want to do like a floor um, and then maybe from here to there kind of like a casting deck and do like a recess for the uh, foot control. But we'll see. Uh, if you guys have any suggestions, leave them down in the comments below. Um, I know a couple of you guys really wanted to see me do something like this where I bought a little boat and made it into like a bass boat. Um, keep in mind I am going to be using this out in the salt so I don't want it to be too bassy just because I want to be able to catch salmon, troll, uh, things like that, go crabbing. So I'm thinking the casting deck would be perfect for you know throwing crab pots and stuff up on there um, and maybe do like a build system and, and so. But anyways, thank you guys for watching. Um, if you guys like this, obviously hit that subscribe button and the thumbs up and uh, turn those notifications on and we'll see you guys next time. Thank you guys for watching.